All right, so Samsung announced a bunch of new devices today. They had the S22, the S22 Plus, and the S22 Ultra. And I was able to spend a little bit of time with all of them. And I even swapped my SIM over to the S22 Ultra. And I thought I'd give some kind of early impressions and thoughts about these devices. So when I unboxed this thing, the package is a little bit smaller this year. And inside it's pretty basic. You have your phone, you have the USB-C charging cable, as well as a SIM card tool. Now the devices this year have a glass back on all three devices. So the S22, the S22 Plus, as well as the S22 Ultra, all have Gorilla Glass Victus Plus. And it's unlike last year's lineup that had plastic for the regular S21. And I think they did it to kind of differentiate between the premiumness of the devices, but this year it's glass all around. And on the S22 and S22 Plus, it's got a flat front, so no curvature at all. And on the back of those two devices, you have a tweaked or updated version of that iconic camera hump they have. It's this design that's really grown on me over the past year, and it looks a little bit cleaner and more modern this year. Now on the S22 Ultra, this device has a very different aesthetic from the other two. The front glass is curved, and it's not like an apologetic curve like we saw last year on the S21 Ultra. The S22 Ultra this year, it's almost like a straight up round corner, and it's very much like the curvature of the Note 20 from a couple years ago. In fact, the whole design is very much Note 20-like. It's got very similar dimensions, and it even has the S Pen that's stored internally. But the S22 Ultra does not support micro SD, so if you need a lot of storage, you have to pay for it up front. Now, this device has a camera array that is a little bit different uh, just from every other phone out there. So it's basically got cutouts in the glass for five different protrusions. And this is the type of kind of camera styling. You only see if there's like a single lens, right? Like old phones with single lenses, they would have a single aperture cutout for that one lens, right? And ever since then, it's just been camera humps and bumps and just clusters of cameras stuck into some kind of shape in the back of phones. But this is just, holes. And to me, this is a pretty classic look, but I think everyone's going to be a little different on this. Now, in terms of the colors, I saw these devices in this phantom black, which exists across the whole line. And it's a pretty standard matte black to me. I think they made a big deal of it last year, but it's a nice black. It's just, it's just black. Uh, there's also a phantom white, which has this iridescent pearly finish to it, which I think is pretty cool. And on the regular S22 and the S22 plus, there's this pink gold, which looks nice, but the coolest color across the board to me is this green color they have this year. It's a dark green, so it's not obnoxiously bright, but at the same time, it's got this rich saturation to it. And I think it's a really nice color. And if I could get a different colored review unit instead of this black one, it'd definitely be that green one. Now, in terms of the size, we have this big boy here, the S22 Ultra, and because it's got curved glass and rounded edges, I would definitely throw a case on this thing if this is the size you're going for. Uh, in terms of the other two, the S22 and the S22 Plus, they are a little bit smaller this year than you might expect. And it's not just the frame, it's actually the displays. They've been shrunken down a little bit. So they have a 6.1 and a 6.6 .6 inch screen now, respectively. And they're both 1080p LTPO panels that can hit up to 120 hertz. They're not the highest in resolution, but they look good. But in true ultra form, the ultra version has the best screen. So this has a 1440p panel, also with LTPO tech in here, but this time it can go down as low as one hertz. And it's also a bigger screen at 6.8 inches. But the peak brightness on this display is 1750 nits. It's the brightest screen I've ever seen on paper. Uh, but the thing you have to keep in mind with nit count is that nit count and perceived brightness don't have this like linear relationship. Like if you double the nit count, it's not double the perceived brightness. So if you have like a 500 nit screen and like a thousand nit screen, even though that, that thousand nit screen is double the nit count, it's probably only like 50% brighter. So uh, it's just something to keep in mind. If you're looking at like an older phone and you're like, oh, you know, I had a 500 nit phone before, it's not like triple the brightness going up to the screen. It's not even close. It's probably like half that. Okay, now all three of these phones have an under display ultrasonic fingerprint sensor and they're seemingly all the same in terms of speed. Like I thought that maybe the Ultra would be faster than the other two, but from what I tested, they're all the same. Uh, the Ultra also has the S Pen. So this S Pen is actually a little bit different from all the S Pens that we've seen on like older Note devices. It's still a slim pen because it's got to fit inside the device, but it's got this matte rubber coating on it, which makes it so much nicer to use. I feel like a lot of the older Note devices, they had these pens that were like slippery and sleek and very colorful, right? They had these like shiny blue and shiny yellow ones, but they just weren't nice to write on. This is a lot better. It's still not a thick pen, like I would prefer uh, a girthier pen, uh, but it's a lot better than previous devices. And the latency is 
very low. Like it's, I think it's been reduced to like 2.8 milliseconds or something like that. You can tell, like when you draw on this thing, you write on it, there's very little latency between when you draw the stroke and when you see it appear on the screen. Now in terms of pricing, they have surprisingly kept the pricing from the previous years of Galaxy S devices. So it starts at $799 at the base and it goes up in $200 increments as you go up to bigger and better devices. Now, the thing I'm most surprised about was this device. Initially, I was like, they have the same pricing at $1199, but now they include the S Pen. But then you realize that at that base model, that $1199 model, the 128 gig storage, they don't have the full 12 gigs of RAM. It's this eight gig model, and I don't know how I feel about it. Like on one hand, it's good that they have this kind of entry level pricing for the Galaxy S22 Ultra if you wanna get into it, but at the same time, it's like, it's the Ultra phone, right? It's got the higher res screen, so any art assets in games that you're loading or just assets in general that you load into memory are gonna be bigger than the 1080p version. Also, you have the pen functionality. And because you have that, if you're ever drawing a note or writing something, that's gonna load up into the memory when you're swapping between stuff. This is just going to inherently use more memory than the regular S series phones. And I just feel like they should have just thrown in 12 at the entry level. I really feel like it's important for this part of, this type of device. But that $200 price difference between the regular S22 and the S22 Plus gets you a bigger screen, a bigger battery, as well as faster charging. But in terms of differences that are kind of in the performance, I can't tell yet. I need to get review units in and actually test them out. But my feeling or my guess is that the S22 Plus, because it's bigger and we're dealing with a chip that can get pretty hot if you push it, uh, it'll just get better performance than the regular S22. Now the camera systems, I wasn't able to spend a lot of time with them, but the S22 Ultra seems to have a really good camera system. The low light photography is some of the best I've seen. Like it's weirdly good at picking out details in really poor lighting conditions. And even with good lighting, the shots look very promising. Now I do need to spend way more time with this camera system to do a proper review on it, which will come in the future. And I wanna compare it with the regular S22 devices. Uh, so these are running One UI 4.1, and I think all of the S22 devices in North America are gonna be equipped with the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1, but there is this rumor that Samsung's gonna be supporting these devices for guaranteed four years of Android operating system updates, or like four generations of Android OSs, which is awesome, plus five years of security, which I think really makes a big difference. Like it adds a lot of value to a product like this. It's like a high-end product. Yeah, I think that's very important in this day and age. So there you have it. These are the uh, the S22 devices. I also took a look at the Tab products, which I'll be doing in a separate video, but the Tab S8 Ultra with its notch looks pretty wild. Okay, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thumbs if you liked it, subs if you loved it. I'll see you guys next time.